Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television here on The Point of View. We pick the right topics, we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. We're live and interactive. You can join us via the WhatsApp number on the screen. There's a big debate tonight. Eight members of parliament are sponsoring a private member's bill to try and deal with the issue of LGBTQI. The bill is called the Promotion of Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Act 2021. Tonight we'll be discussing what is in the bill. We'll speak to one of the promoters of the bill and also speak to uh, one of the civil society groups that does not support what this bill is about. It's going to be interactive and exciting. Send us your comments and your views about this raging debate on our WhatsApp number. I'll come back and tell you who my guests are. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. So tonight we're trying to understand the mind of the eight MPs who have set this bill in motion. We're trying to get the imports of some of the highlights of the bill and discuss what it really tries to achieve. The members of parliament in question are the MP for Ningo Pram Pram Samon, Nati George, Honorable Dela Ajoa Soa, MP for Pando, Honorable Emmanuel Bejra, MP for Ho West, Honorable John Intim Fojo, MP for Asin South, Honorable Alassan Suhini, MP for Tamale North, Honorable Ritana Odole Soa, MP for Ladade Kotopon, Honorable Helena Joan Toso, MP for Kriti Krachi or Krachi West, and Honorable Roxin. Nelson Dafiamekpo, MP for South Dai. I will be joined by Honorable Bezra, who is MP for Whole West. To start with, later on, I'll speak to Professor Iji Mabwede, who is the co-founder of CDD and the current chairman of Afrobarometer, and also pick his thoughts on the matter. Emmanuel Bezra is part of our ECOWAS parliament as well. They're actually on their way to Winneba for a big conference. I'll start with him before I come to Professor Iji Mabwede. Honorable Bezra, good evening. Thank you for joining us on The Point of View. Good evening, Bernard, and good evening to your cherished viewers and listeners. Uh, let me commend you for what it, uh, you and your colleagues are doing for Mother Ghana, especially for the voter review. Fun. I saw your, your video the other day, and I was so excited that you've done something good for the region. It's good. Keep it up. Fantastic. So at what point did the eight of you decide to champion this bill? Just give me some, some timelines. When did this become something that eight of you decided to push through parliament by private members bill Bernard, actually we are not eight we are about 25 members who came together but 25 of us uh, were not uh, in parliament on the day that we presented the bill to speaker where we signed so we are more than eight we are about 25 and uh, we are all working together uh, from the various uh, uh, divides in the house uh, well uh, you know in january there was this issue about uh, some organization or some groups uh, meeting at the place uh, in Accra to advocate and open up an office uh, to advocate for LGBTQI. And Ghanaians were insane. People were so, people were not happy. Uh, the police have to rush in to close down the place. The National House of Chief came in to issue a statement. We have our clergy uh, the National Charismatic and uh, Pentecostal Council also issued a statement. And everybody, there, there was an uproar in the country concerning this. And therefore, we realized that we need to do something about it because we're hearing about LBGT, the activities of LBGTQI. And we decided that why? Why don't you go into the law to find out whether there is any uh, law that permits them to organize themselves and also to uh do or to, to to behave the way they are behaving and and so we we fell on, on, on to one of our uh collaborators uh who are uh, the members of the coalition for proper human sexual rights in ghana uh, they have been working on this for some time now and we spoke to them and they gave us uh, we had a meeting with them they decided to take us through some orientation and also explain to us that indeed we have laws in Ghana, the criminal act in Ghana uh, is, is, is not clear as to uh, whether we should allow the activities to happen in Ghana or even to promote it in Ghana at all. Uh, but because uh, there is invasion of our, our culture, they think that it's time for us to come up with a law that will be so clear and distinct uh, as to our values, our cultural values, and, 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 uh, and our behavior in the country. Mm. And so we, we, we the, the 25 of us met with them, 
and uh, they took us through, and then we decided to they decided to assist us to draw uh, this bill for us. So that's what, mm. and that was from January. And by the grace of God, we met Speaker as soon as we uh, we we resumed Parliament in June. We came up with a bill. Mm. But as you rightly said, Section Twenty Section One Hundred Four of the uh, Act Twenty Nine already yeah. promote, uh, prohibits unnatural carnal knowledge. And in exactly. fact, it describes some of the offenses as a first degree felony, another mm. category as a misdemeanor. And exactly. then, so why go beyond that? Is that not enough? Okay, so, <clears throat> Bernard, yes, indeed, uh, if you look at the, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the at 29, you've noticed that the session 104 limits the art to only what we call carnal and natural carnal knowledge. It doesn't go beyond that. Now, when you talk about natural carnal knowledge, if you permit me, I can reach the session for you. Say, a person who has a natural carnal knowledge of another person of not less than 16 years of age without the consent of that other person commit first degree felony and is liable on conviction to a term of imprisonment of none less than five years and not more than 25 years, not more than 25 years. B, or of any person of not less than 16 years of age with the consent of that person commit a misdemeanor or C, of an animal commits, commit a misdemeanor. Two, a natural canon knowledge is sexual intercourse with a person in a natural manner or with an animal. Now, Ben, what is a natural manner? Now, there is the unnatural manner is either having sex through, you know, uh, the, the anus or any other places. That is not natural. But this bill does not talk of the other issues that relate to LBGTQI. For instance, a man changing himself into a woman, and that woman, man-man, decides to marry a man. Transgender, we are talking about transgender now. This bill does not cover transgender. This bill does not cover care. This bill does not cover questioning. This bill does not cover pansies. This bill does not cover a lot of things that we all know that the LBGTQI you know, activists are engaged in. So we decide to bring all together so that we can have a holistic bill that would deal not with a man having you know, a natural kind of knowledge for an animal or a man having a natural kind of knowledge for another man, but a man having a natural kind of knowledge with a man who has just converted or trans transformed himself into a woman, which is alien to our culture. And so, Bella, these are the things that we brought in, and 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 and, 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 and the bill mm. will deal with. Uh, if you look at the bill, we define all that: uh, bisexual, transgender, transsexual, a queer, an ally, a pansexual. You know, Ben, the, the list continue endless. And we think that it's time for us to have a bill mm. that will take care of all. Okay, this. one of the things that has caused a lot of attention, apart from the fact that people are even saying, why are you interested in what happens in post bedrooms? And why are you legislating on that? <laughs> the, the other one that has caught attention is where you say persons who use any medium or technological platform to produce, procure, market, broadcast, disseminate, publish or distribute materials with the intention of promoting LGBTQ+. Plus faces a deal time of between five to ten years some see that as a stretch so that you are now saying that even discussing or putting out information about this is criminalized Bernard, exactly um when you look at a session uh, 13 14 and 15 that's where you have all this now session 13 says that uh, prohibition of propaganda or promotion and advocacy for activities directed at a child. That's the session 13. Then 14 talks about the fact that 
prohibition of funding or sponsorship for prohibited activities. Then, your 15, with the disbandment of LGBTQIIP group, Society Association Club Organization. So you look at a subheading before you read. Now, 14 says that a person who funds or sponsors an activity prohibited under this act commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to imprisonment for a term not less than five years and no more than 10 years. You know, in the, the criminal act, it's 25, not less than five and not more than 25. We have even reduced it to 10 years. So what people are talking, I just laugh, that the act is seven, act is talking about 25 years maximum. Now, where a body corporate is convicted under a sister and so, you know, section five, six, and 25 of, of, of the interpretation act shall apply or an incompleted body of a person is convicted under association. So, so we are saying that we are prohibiting any man or a woman or a group of persons who may publish one, who may decide to promote, who may decide to finance it, who may decide to you know do anything that will seem to be promoting LGBTQI in this country who, who is criminalized. And that is exactly what the bill is saying. Now, this is a bill, Bernard, you know, bills will have to go to parliament. If anybody thinks that what we put here will be stretching it, just to bring us an amendment and convince parliament why this amendment should be carried, and then we'll carry it through. But for now, at least a bill which has not yet been passed. Okay, stay on the, the line. Uh, moments before we came on here, I spoke to the co-founder of CDD, who is also the chairperson of Afrobarometer, Professor E.J. Mabwedi, and try to understand his concerns about what you and your colleagues were doing in Parliament in respect of this bill. I want you to listen to his answers, and then I'll come back to you. So, listen, viewers, this is a, a quick um, sort of uh, segue into my conversation with Professor E.J. Mabwedi. I called him up before we came on here briefly and asked him some key concerns he had raised about what the parliamentarians were going about in respect of this bill. So the eight members of parliament have put together this draft bill, which is supposed to go through the various stages. And we're going to find out how that's going to pan out. We'll talk to one of the members of the eight shortly. But let's, let's pick the thoughts of um, the co-founder of Afrobarometer and CDD, who's currently the chairperson of the Afrobarometer board, Professor E. J. Mabwidi, on his general thoughts on the idea to even pass such a law and what it makes for some of the key clauses. Prof, thanks for joining us on The Point of View. Thank you, Ben. So uh, wh what was your initial reaction when you heard that uh, MPs were considering passing a law proscribing the practice and promotion of LGBTQI+. One of the first ways in which they are using this important democratic governance promoting facility. You know, it's, it's as if uh, you went out of your way uh, to, to get uh, some nice, uh, maybe expensive uh, detergents for, for, for cleansing oneself. And the, pe the person you give the, who got these things basically just decided to use that to uh, wash stones and pebbles instead of washing themselves. This parliament has a lot of work to do. It has a lot of things that it must do to perform its legislative function better, to perform its representative functions better, and to especially credibly and diligently oversight the executive. So when I see and when I heard that they've come up, or some members of the Ghanaian legislature, the leg legislature have come up with this draft legislation, my, the question in my mind was, have they decided that promoting homophobic legislation is the best way for them to thank the Ghanaian voter, the Ghanaian taxpayer, and the Ghanaian public at large for the kind of indulgences we have allowed them. For instance, for the fact that we allowed them to award to themselves heavily subsidized 
$100,000 per head car loans, or for uh, their abject failure as legislators to protect the public purse, or for their failure to diligently oversight the executive branch of government and the presidency? Is this all the things that they care about in a Ghana where the justifiable is Galamse mining has become bogged down, or a, legis a, a legislature that has been totally ineffective in investigating questionable judgment debts and other expensive debts that have ar arisen from their own lax and possibly uh, co connivance in uh, getting us into, into these bad loans in the first place. So this use of the resources, limited resources of the legislature, of the parliament of Ghana, the, both their time and resources, just completely baffle me and also makes me feel disappointed. But are you in being surprised, not misreading the public sentiment? Because these are politicians. And for some reason, of course, seven of them are from one party, the other is from the government party. But the fact that they've been able to f get some sort of bipartisan um, consensus on this suggests that they see this as a problem to solve and possibly the political capital to be gained as well. So are you not misreading the, the mood, not just of parliament, but of the public? Because I, I'm not sure these politicians who go about with this private member's bill if they thought the public would be against them. No. And first, Bernard, from where I sit, it is not offensive to me, it's not a problem to me, if ordinary citizens and citizen groups, uh, civil society and uh, the public, are the ones who are pushing for this legislation. But it is a problem for me when legislators decide to take up this sort of project, project and, uh, and to push this sort of legislation. You know, I don't I understand it when Ghanaian clergy, both Muslim and Christian, express opposition to LBGTQ. Uh, um, I completely get it when maybe some civil society group arises for whom this is the main advocacy uh, point they want to make. That's all, you know, that's not where we are. It is the fact that our legislators have decided that of all the things in the world and in Ghana that they must do to help us and to help lift their own obligations LGBT, criminalizing, criminalizing LGBT is what is important to do. That is what bothers me. You know, and, and again, somebody will say, well, uh, it is supported by many Ghanaians. Yes, you know, it may be supported by many Ghanaians, but lead, lead, leaders have a responsibility to lead from the front, not to lead from behind. I am... Um, involved with Afrobarometer surveys. On, the, on one occasion, a couple of occasions, when we asked Ghanaians about their views about whether uh, it's OK to beat their wives, and this, a majority said yes. So should legislation be passed enabling uh, abusive spouses to go ahead and do that? You know, this is not how you build society. This is not how you build cohesion. You mm. cannot just say that because it's popular, I'm going to do it. Now, there are a couple of arguments that our law already criminalizes homosexual marriage. And of course, we haven't seen in recent history, at least I stand to be corrected, we haven't seen anybody actually jailed for a homosexual marriage. But we've seen, for example, somebody who sodomized a minor get jail term. So people are saying that this is probably just the next step because the law already criminalizes. And in fact, the president has already said 
that he will not legalize uh, same-sex marriage so that some will see this as a natural, uh, I don't want to use the word progression, but obviously the, the next step in that chain of activities. So, so the state can say that it would not recognize same-sex marriages and that will be, you know, we can't, you know, if the state says that, the state will be in its own right in saying that. And I don't think this is what this legislation is about because I haven't heard of any instance where some same-sex couples wanted to marry and they went to apply for a license from the registrar generals. So it's red herring. It's a non-existent problem. And my point is, why would you be trying to solve non-existent problems when there are live, serious problems that face all of us, that face the nation, and you have been elected as parliamentarians to help us solve and address these problems? Mm. Well, the MPs are saying that there is an agenda to uh, promote this type of behavior among our young people. They quote or they cite some of the efforts with the CSE education, and they're basically saying that they want to promote proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values. And in fact, that's the name of the bill, Promotion of Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill. So that this is a values issue. I mean, is there no legitimacy to some people who believe that in Ghana, majority of people believe that this is the way we should live and we don't want anybody to come and tell us or normalize an alternative way of living? First of all, the, 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 the phrases you have captured, uh, proper human sexual, whatever, whatever, uh, don't they ring to you like uh, Orwellian? It's like uh, what uh, George, some of the, 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 the things that George Orwell uh, chronicled uh, in his animal farm. These are, these are just um, emotive words meant to sort of uh, arouse passions and basically in this case, homophobic passions and, um, and to encourage people to exhibit cruelty towards other human beings. I, I, I think it's, it's actually quite despicable, if you ask me. Mm. Well, the, 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 the coinage is not mine. Proper human sexual rights and then Ghanaian family values. I, are you saying that such a thing as Ghanaian family values doesn't exist or doesn't? It's, as I said, if there are Ghanaian family values, I appreciate it when heads of families articulate that or clergy articulate that, moral leaders articulate that. I have no problem with that. But I have issues with legislators seeking to legislate on morality. But if in certain societies legislators have legalized same-sex marriage, that legalization was not done by the clergy or private individuals. It was done by lawmakers. So why can't legislators in another context decide that they don't want that type of Activity. Legislat legislators in our conscious can decide to preemptively, but my point is that of all that, they, does it mean they really don't have the, any other thing to do? Why? What is the whole? What's the, what's, what's about this issue that gets? Ghanaian legislators who have been exceedingly inactive in many areas and in the performance of many of the functions direct, that directly related to their work. Why are they focused on this? So for me, as I said earlier, it is just the diversion of attention from key pressing national issues the abdication of their responsibility to oversight the executive to 
protect the public purse and also to restrain themselves from abusing the goodwill of Ghanaians by asking for so much for their personal convenience and personal comfort. These are the things that I am exercised about. And these are the things that I encourage fellow citizens to be exercised about and not let them get away with um, you know, basically selling us a crap of goods. But, Prof, the, 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 the argument is that members of parliament represent constituencies of voters. And those voters, we haven't done a scientific study to find out what their views are about LGBTQ+. Plus. But you can generally say that the inclination of most Ghanaians is along the lines of non-tolerance for LGBTQ+. Plus. That doesn't necessarily move to homophobia or hate, but there is a, a sort of um, hysteria that is evoked each time the, the matter comes up. So in that sense, they could, they, could, they could be covered in saying that this is how our constituents feel, and that's how come we are coming up with this proposed bill. You mean their constituents are not more interested in getting employment for uh, their young ones or uh, getting electricity running throughout the day or getting the system to work better. They are, they are, their constituents are more interested in regula regula regulating the morality of Ghanaians when, in fact, we have pastors, we have clergy, we have bishops, we have archbishops, we have a whole slew of them uh, do, working on moral issues and promoting moral values. So why don't the why don't the, the legislators leave this business of morality to those with the proper responsibility and proper training to to take care of them while they focus on other things that the average citizen is not in a position to do anything about? Are you um, comforted by the fact that of the eight members of parliament? Who, who sort of promote this bill, only one is from the, the governing side. And also for the fact that this is not a government-initiated bill, because that would have changed the conversation, right? If this was something the attorney general or the relevant ministry from government was initiating and sponsoring, it would have been a much more, it's much more difficult, different conversation we'll be having at this point, right? Well, as I said earlier, I am actually a lot more disappointed that this is one of the first uh, instances in which the, the Ghanaian parliament is using this instrument of private, private members' bill. Uh, and in that case, uh, maybe uh, I would have been, a, a, I, would have, I would have had a different kind of conversation with you if it had been promoted by the attorney general's office or something as is normally as we tend to do or as we've been doing in this republic i think it's a complete waste of um of a very very important instrument for promoting democratic governance and especially asserting the authority of the legislature over the executive it's it's a it's a, it's a waste of an important resource but you did earlier on um raise some issues about uh, the, the provisions of the legislation. Yes, let me get in there. Let, let me just give a few of them. So, for example, individuals of the same sex who engage in sexual intercourse are to be fined between 50 and 5,000 penalty units or face a jail term between three to five years. So, basically, they are prescribing the act between people. And then there's also the issue of use of any medium or technological platform to produce, procure, market, broadcast, disseminate, publish, or distribute materials with the intention of promoting LGBTQI+, also facing a jail I, term of between 5 to 10 years. What are your thoughts on those? The act and the promotion, both attracting heavy fines or jail, jail time. Actually, I truly uh, hate to have to be discussing, talking about something like this altogether. I mean, so 
we do this, the, those who are proposing this legislation, they mean to say that they want our scarce, precious policing capabilities, our limited and inadequate policing capabilities uh, to be stretched to bedrooms. They think it's a sensible uh, direction to go in view of the reality of crime ridden urban street insecurity, uh, thefts, break-ins, um, the recent spate of murders that have remained unsolved. They want our limited policing resources to be uh, diverted into policing bedrooms and what people do in their bedrooms. Is that, is that, what, what, what sense does this make? What are you expecting the president to do? Because from the way the law flows, you go through various readings in parliament, committees will work on it, and then the president has to assent the bill. Do, do you, based on his, what, 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 what do you think and what do you know from the president's demeanor that he would do if this gets to his table? I cannot hazard a guess here. I can only express the hope that should this bill pass through parliament, the president withholds accent to it. I can only hope, but you know, it, that's not, it's not for me to say whether it will be, it, it be done or it won't be done. But I can only hope and pray that uh, when it gets to that point, uh, the president basically um, just let it rot away. Just before you leave, though, there's a small part which is essentially also saying that anyone who physically or verbally assaults or abuses or harasses a person accused of being LGBTQ+, plus could be fined 500 penalty units and 1,000, and then jail between six months and a year. I mean, how, how do you see that? That's essentially trying to say that don't physically or verbally abuse or assault somebody of that orientation. Well... Unfortunately, you know, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know what the prevailing law says about what's the, pa the, the, the penalty for assaulting anybody, assaulting any Ghanaian, assaulting any citizen. Uh, but I'm, I'm just, I think that, you know, the idea of, um, of setting up this, you know, coming up with this crafting legislation of this nature which is essentially cruel, which is essentially divisive, which is essentially primitive to the idea of uh, saying that, you know, you have uh, also made provisions to protect uh, the LGBTQ uh, people from being assaulted and so on, and that they, you know, those who engage in assault uh, would be punished in any specific way, I think is disingenuous. And uh, they, they just uh, it's meant to throw dust in, in the eyes of the public. As I say, I mean, I see this whole thing as an attempt by the legislators to basically uh, to tell Ghanaians that, oh, yeah, we are doing some, something nice for you. We are pandering to you in ways that oh, uh, you like. So uh, allow us to keep our 100,000 per head vehicles and uh, allow us to get away with not protecting the public purse or oversighting the executive and doing all the things that you voted us to do uh, we've given you this one instead i think it's, it's all together disingenuous thank you prof for your time thank you thanks very much that was uh, professor eg mabuidi who is the board chairman for afrobarometer and also the co-founder of cdd this is the point of view stay with us we'll be right back Welcome back to The Point of View. So you had me there with Professor E.G. Mabwedi, who's the co-founder of CDD and also the chairman of the Afrobarometer. Clay not happy. He used very strong words. He says it's cruel, divisive, and primitive. He says MPs are trying to con the public over the 100,000 that was pledged on them. Makes a lot of serious points. He describes the bill as a piece of homophobic legislation and that... Um, this isn't, doesn't sit well. Uh, Honorable Bedra, I'm sure you heard him. Um, Bernard, yes. I am scandalized. Wow. Yes. I mean, the learned professor to use such words on elected members of parliament, 
shows clearly that is one of the few people who thinks that we should continue the way the country is going, irrespective of whether ill or evil things are happening. Bernard, professor has indicted his own colleagues. Because I mentioned that there is a civil society organization that started this whole business and who help us to passion this law. And that is a coalition for proper human sexual rights and family values made up of clergymen, made up of Muslim clergy, made up of traditional leader, regional household chief, national household chief. It is not just member, eight members of parliament sitting somewhere who came out with this bill. So I, I am really scandalized, uh, Bernard. And I want to believe that Prof is one of the few people who have been paid, and I, I'm choosing my way carefully. Prof CDD, or Prof himself, is one of the few people who have been paid by donors mm. to throw light, bad light, onto this bill. But they are, they will, this bill will be passed. Oh, Honorable, let, 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 let's, take, let, let's take it one by one. Um, yes. That you say he's betrayed CSOs. Now, there's no law that says all civil society groups must agree on of everything. Course, so that's number one. Num number two, number, number, number two, you can, you can also say that he has been paid to take this position because I've interviewed him a few times and his position is very consistent on this. So what he's no, saying to me, no, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying what, what he's saying, what he said to me is no different from he said to me when I interviewed him a few months ago about the, some, the corruption in the country and I asked him a question about this. So my point is, this has been his position very consistently. No, but Bernard, I am trying to understand why he said that, oh, if it's the clergy men, the moral conscience of the society that, has, that are coming out of this bill, or it is civil society organizations that are coming out of this bill, he doesn't have a problem with that. But he has a problem with eight members of parliament who are coming out of a bill. That is my problem with fraud. Mm. Fair enough. So what... Yes, but, what? But, but, oh, go but, on. But Bernard, Pro, let, me, let me continue. Let me just end up from, from what you started. You know, Prof said that this is a first bill that we are coming out with as private members. It's a lie. No, he said, no he said one of the first. He didn't say the first. He said one of the first. And this is not one of the first. Because recent, just recently, we passed what we call Road Traffic Amendment Act. Yeah, and but no, but, but honorable, this is among the top five since 2020 when this started. You haven't passed five private yeah. members' bills, so he's right if he says this is one of the first. We shouldn't split hairs over this. Allow, allow me to okay, finish. go ahead. I just want to we make have, a factual correction. No, currently we have five private members' bills being gazetted now, who are all presented to Speaker of Parliament the same day. Why is he not talking about those ones? But he's talking about only this particular one, claiming that he's so homophobic. We have one of them called Office of the Special Prosecutor Amendment Bill. We have the Criminal Offenses Amendment Bill. We have Citizenship Amendment Bill. We have Constitution of the Republic of Ghana Amendment Bill. Before we have the Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill. Five different bills presented and gazetted now. And they are all going on the same day. So why is he picking and choosing? Thinking that we are not doing anything in parliament at all. We are only interested in 100,000 a car loan. We cannot even hold our, our executives accountable. I mean, for crying loud, Bernard, learned professor should have gone down, you know, <laughs> with this, his, his, his thought at all. I am, I am not particularly happy with him, even though it's my friend. Mm. I, I guess the feeling is that there are much more pressing issues, corruption, unemployment, underdevelopment. And of all the things to use this private member's opportunity for, he feels this shouldn't have been a priority. I, I guess that was the, the point he was trying to make. I just, I just mentioned that we are having uh, somebody, uh, one of our colleagues have come up with the Office of the Special Prosecutor Amendment Bill. It's part of the fight against corruption, isn't it? Bernard. Fair enough. So what about... Okay. So, okay. so, so uh, let me, let me, let, okay, let me continue with, from, mm. from there. Mm -hmm. and, and also, when you talk about, and, and I'm happy you brought it up, when you talk about proper <laughs> human sexual rights and Ghanaian family value, 
he could not defend it because Prof has not read. And I'm happy you have read through, at least you have read through the, 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 the bill, and you have some ideas about the bill. Now, if you take a family value, if the family is broken, you cannot have a united country. You cannot have a nation that does not have a family. If our family value is broken, and from, from the report that we have received, our young children are being introduced to some of these things that we have mentioned, we've mentioned. If our family, our business is broken, how can the center hold? How can the nation go forward? Prof must address that, that you don't cut the, the tree at the head, you must deal with it from the root. So we are talking about proper Ghanaian family value. If Prof like, you should go and promote this in, 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 in any of the Arabic countries and see whether those cultures will accept the indoctrination of this type of things that he's talking about. We've been in this country, many things are happening. We spoke about it and we let it go because we don't have legislation. And we are saying that we want to have legis legislation that will not adulterate our culture. The chief have, have accepted it, the traditional rulers, our, our imams have accepted it, our clergymen have accepted it. I don't see why one or two civil society organizations will be against it. In any case, if Prof has read through this bill, it will come out with amendments. I, I, I'm happy you mentioned about the fact that if anyone is called, you are not supposed to abuse the person. If, if, you, if you do that, you are also, you know, you, you also be, uh, uh, you also be taken uh, mm. care of by the law. He couldn't even answer because he's not read through. So he's just standing at the top of a roof and shouting without reading through this. But, but uh, you, you, know, ad you admit that the punishment for physically or verbally abusing or assaulting practitioners of this uh, lifestyle or this, yeah. this it's, it's much more lenient. So you are giving zero, uh, I mean, less than a year punishment, but the original mm. sin, in your view, attracts very hefty mm. punishment. In fact, he considers yeah. it a, a red herring because assault of any kind has punishments under the criminal code already. So if you insert in there that, oh, if you assault somebody who's LGBTQ or you abuse them, you get this zero to six months or whatever. It's almost, um, he, he considers it like, a, not in the exact same words, but it's almost like a, a smoke screen, not necessarily that significant. The work of every parliament is to align laws with existing law. The existing criminal code or criminal act talks about assault. We cannot add anything more than what the criminal act says. That is why we make as we as much as possible align it with what we have in the criminal act. So it's not a red herring at all. Are you concerned about family or is this just a political tool? Because some people think that there are so many other challenges facing the family. For example, teenage pregnancy in the past couple of months, rampant in many poor communities. Teenagers are having kids. In fact, there are grandmothers who are less than 35 years old. We haven't seen the same level of unity and anger and united effort against some of these social ills. Economic inequality, very, very serious. We haven't seen the same level of, of anger against that. So if, if he asks a question of priorities and if people question why this one, is it because it's so popular with the populace that, oh, people don't like LGBTQ, so let's jump on it so we can gain some political capital? Well, um, Bernard, we belong to the society. And uh, when I go to my constituency, and the constituency tells me that, well, this is what is happening in and around us, therefore take it to parliament. Uh, it, it is my duty as an elected representative of the people to go and do that and take them through uh, or make sure that laws are, are, are made or, or voice it out. And so if, if, if we think that the LBGTQI thing is one of current issues that we need to bring to fore, we have to do that. And that is exactly what we are doing. But mind you, Bena, just last week, most of us asked questions in Parliament. I spoke about the fact that wager, for instance, the, the, 
is 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 lying right on a seismic zone and which is a quick zone first question that is a public interest question and others ask other questions you know somebody even want to find out how much the president spent on his trip around it's not a public interest question we are doing all that so it is not only about lbgtpr that we are doing another thing we should also know that i've already mentioned this bill it's a deal and if somebody feels strongly that family value includes teenage pregnancy we can bring you know an amendment to us which will be incorporated in into the bill so it's not cast in stone at all we have not passed it for the president to uh, ascend his signature it is open and as soon as it's presented to the committee you can bring your proposal or your suggestions what kind of support does this have on the floor you said there were 25 of you originally who were pushing this and it just turns out that eight were in parliament on the day that that 25 are they from both sides because of this eight only one is from mpp they are all in fact we 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 are uh, i'll say we are 50 50 and uh you will when we get to the floor you will see that most people will be speaking to it on that day we we're supposed to sign the bill before speaker and most of our colleagues could not get to parliament before the the, the program ends so those of us who were there were the people who are saying who signed the bill I, I, some were coming from Kumasi. one particular lady and i can i won't mention her name but she said she's going to lay the bill because she was originally part of it and that she wants to lay the bill on that day so we are waiting when the bill comes from assembly press she'll be the one laying the bill and she's from the other side you know okay. there are many of them who will tell you that look this bill this is the time for this bill to be introduced i have a couple more questions for you but i'll take a short break uh, i need to know more about what happens if the president decides not to sign and also i have a couple of questions about some of the prescribed punishments but I'll be right back. Stay with me. This is The Point of View. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Point of View. We're still trying to get more insight into the uh, bill that the members of parliament are pushing, which is to promote proper human sexual rights. I just want to show you some of the highlights of the bill. So it says individuals of the same sex who engage in sexual intercourse to be fined between 50 and 5,000 penalty units. Persons who use any medium of technology or platform to produce, procure, market, broadcast, disseminate, publish, or distribute materials with the intent of promoting LGBTQI face a jail term of between 5 and 10 years. All LGBTQI groups, associations, clubs, and organizations to be disbanded. Anyone found guilty to be jailed between 6 and 10 years. They also prescribe sex with or marriage with an animal, ban on same-sex marriage, and marriage to someone who has undergone sex reassignment. Anyone who funds or sponsors LGBTQI groups or activities to be jailed five to ten years. LGBTQI persons not to be granted application to adopt or foster a child or children. Persons of the same sex who make public show of amorous relationship to face a jail term of between six months and a year. And then anyone who physically assaults or abuses or harasses a person, LGBTQI, to be fined between 500 penalties and a thousand. And then a few other things. Um, Honorable Bedra, if you are still there, the indication I get from, I think Gabby tweeted this morning and said that the president has already said he will not legalize same-sex marriage and that promoters yeah. of this bill know this. So the only possible motive would be to get Ghana blacklisted because internationally, at least from Western countries, the mood is not for such a bill. I mean, what's your comment on that? Well, um, uh, Bernard. Uh, have any international community blacklisted Arab countries for not allowing same sex and LGBT activities in those countries? I mean, why are we, why, why are we limiting a black, a blacklisting Ghana to only LGBT? Why are we not limiting it? Why are we not extending it to corruption and other activities in Ghana? Mm. I mean, we should stop this, you know, childish play. If people are having issues with us, they should find out why the bill is in place, uh, why we are bringing the bill uh, in, uh, at all. Okay. Bernard, you know, in, 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 let, me, let me give you a typical example. The culture of Japanese are still intact. It's not be adulterated. But we are a crop of people, blacks, you know, initially the colonial masses came, 
they, they told us all kinds of things. We accepted it. And they are now telling us that, well, your culture is not good. Please allow you know, another culture to infiltrate into your culture. Uh, don't allow your, your men to marry three or four women because we don't do it. If you do, we will jail you. But you allow a man to marry a man. And, 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 and if you don't allow it, we'll blacklist you. They can go to hell. Mm. Let me end by asking what the parliament decision would be if the president vetoes the bill by not assenting. I understand that parliament will require a two-third majority to override a presidential veto. Do you believe there is enough bipartisan support for this, for this to go through if the president chooses not to assent? This is a constitutional matter, Bernard, and I can assure you that over 90% of members of parliament support this bill. You will see the overwhelming support when it comes to the debate on the floor. And I can assure you that the president will have no other choice but to assent. And, and, and let me just give a typical example. The chairman of the Coalition for Proper Human Social Rights and, and, and Family Values is Professor Opoku Enina. He is the chairman of the coalition. The same person is the chairman of the National Cathedral. I don't think Professor Onyina, Reverend Professor Onyina, will go and sit with the president to tell him that I am supervising your cathedral for you. You have placed me there. And therefore, being the, a member of the civil society organization who is also promoting this, please sign or assent to this, and the president will refuse. The people behind this, those who are sitting somewhere and tweeting and writing, their names are of age. And it's time for us to take our destiny into our own hands. Bernard. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Emmanuel Kwesi Bejra. He's the MP for Whole West, who is one of the, now I'm told, 25 members of parliament pushing this bill, although only eight signed. We also had earlier on Professor Iji Mabwidi, who's the former executive director, co founder of CDD, board chairman of Afrobarometer who's against the bill. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. We'll be with you next time. The Business Dashboard is next. Stay with CCTV. Goodbye.